So, Andrew Crichton, here we go. He's an entrepreneur, a project manager, a startup consultant, an avid traveler, and the occasional kite surfer. After leaving the corporate world behind three years ago, Andrew has launched several businesses and become known for his no-nonsense approach to project planning, shortest route to done. His talk tonight, Time Moves Relentlessly. So let's welcome Andrew. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everybody. I want to tell you here tonight that not all fuck-ups are spectacular flame-outs. Some are of the slow burn variety. The slow burns that move insidiously and creep up on you when you least expect it. This is the story of my slow burn fuck up and how it fucked me over. And it's not that time that I almost single-handedly burned down Western Australia's largest national park. That's a story for another time. But like all, um, like all fuck ups, this one starts with the best intention. But I seem to be prone, when I was thinking about which, which talk to give tonight, which, which fuck up to present, I realized I had quite a few to choose from. I think maybe that I'm prone to fuck ups. So from today, I want to think of fuck ups as adventures. So like all good adventures, good fuck ups start with the best intentions. In my case, I was leaving the corporate world. This is, this is the corporate world, and uh, <laughs> hard to believe on the right when I was a student, that's what I wanted to become on the left, right? So I had a good job, well paying, you know the story, doing designing power stations, building bridges, just, and dealing with all things electricity. And in this lure, this digital nomad, you know, fishing lure just waved in front of me and, and grabbed my attention. And I, I jumped on it, and I followed the digital nomad dream, the one that where I could do anything, anywhere. And for all of those who are not already cringing, you need to listen extra carefully. <laughs> so I decided I want to live till 80. And I want to live till 80 because I'm an optimist. Most men in my family don't live past 50. And that's very daunting and also very motivating. For some years ago, a white but wire blogger, Tim, Tim Urban, um, created a, a blog post called Your Life in Weeks. And this is my life in weeks. Every dot on there represents one week. Every line represents one year. That's, that's kind of awkward. <laughs> Thanks, Vito. Every, um, so the end of the red dots is where I started my journey. And the end of the blue dots is roughly now. So you can see I'm roughly just over halfway through my life. Alright, There's a button I wasn't supposed to press, and clearly that just pressed it. Thank you, Squire. Alright, life in weeks. So I started my journey at the beginning of the blue. I've been a digital nomad now for a few years. What those blue dots represent is my story. And that story represents about two years, or 5% of my remaining lifespan. That 5% wasn't all wasted, though. Aside from giving me the chance to stand up here today, and like Chris alluded to earlier, saying fuck a lot in a public forum and not getting in trouble for it, it provided me with some key lessons. And those lessons were, firstly, time is greater than money. Also, that work and play need some clear boundaries. And finally, jumping all over the place is not that conducive to actually getting some shit done. I'm going to start to hold my hand here. So when I started my digital nomad, location independent, change the world business, the actual nature of the business wasn't important, but needless to say it involved a website, a great idea, and WordPress. But instead of focusing on what I knew best, in my case project management, and what I knew a business needed to survive and to thrive, things like customers, I chose instead to learn WordPress. What a mistake. I did this while writing a book and while living in Thailand. Oops, yeah. This is out of control. <laughs> so, time is not money, see? So, while I was living in Thailand, I decided that there were some critical things that I needed to learn. I needed to learn how to make my favorite dessert, mango sticky rice. I needed to learn how much Chang that I could drink before I got a Chang over. <laughs> I needed to learn that I could actually do a visa run inside eight hours and that all my stuff could actually shrink inside 10 kilograms. I also learned more important things like that military curfews actually are hard boundaries and should be respected. <laughs> oh 
And I also learned that for only $799 one time special introductory offer, I could learn more and make my money online. <laughs> Which of course I didn't learn that. I did however learn that stingrays can inflict more pain than anything I've ever come across. And as a direct result of that, I also learned that medical care varies wildly across the globe. <laughs> but my business wasn't ready to launch just yet. 22 weeks in, I'd seen a fair bit of Asia, done a few things, had amazing venture, but I was not getting any shit done. In progress. But instead of focusing on my business, I decided that Thailand was getting just maybe a little bit stale. It was time for another adventure. So there was, there was too much stuff to do. There was kite surfing, there was elephant riding, there was tea plantations to see, there was monuments, there was temples, and you name it. So I went to Cambodia, and then I went to Vietnam, and then I went to Malaysia. I visited six countries in all, tried too many different foods to count, and started a sum total of zero businesses. The thing is, while I was doing this stuff, I wasn't on a holiday because I was trying to work all the time. I wasn't really working because I was trying to absorb the local culture. And I wasn't really absorbing the local culture because I was too busy trying to socialize. <laughs> and successfully achieved none of the above. <laughs> so after this went on for a little while, I had a mini, what the fuck am I doing crisis. <laughs> So I decided to actually apply some techniques that I knew, so my project management, and actually launch my business. I was very proud of myself. I thought I'd launch a business and just wait for the customers to start rolling in. It didn't happen. I didn't need a marketing plan, right? People would just type what they wanted into Google and my website would pop up. You know how this works. So I realized that my customers didn't know me. I hadn't talked to them. I didn't know who they were necessarily. And more importantly, my customers did not want the product that I was selling. <laughs> what a fuck up. <laughs> so here I was, two years in. Asia had been great. I learned a new skill from scratch, one that was arguably useless, thanks WordPress. <laughs> and I had nothing really to show for it. I had no, I had no, uh, no customers which meant I had no business. Because I had no business, it meant I had no income. Because I had no income, it meant I had no, lo no life. And no life meant I had no time. So I learned a whole bunch of lessons, one of which was, first, understand your customers' needs. And there's an acronym for sure. <laughs> Apologies for the spelling, any English teachers in the room. <laughs> that, in fact, is not my real takeaway. My real takeaway is that time is more important than money. Time is way more important. Money can buy you time now, but it cannot buy you back time that you have lost. So I want to encourage everyone here to spend their time wisely, spend your time wisely, because there is less of it than you think. Okay, thank you, Andrew. That was great. The slow burn. You know, we usually get the two by four to the head, but you had the slow burn. So you're going to tell us about burning down the the national park in Australia, or is that another time? You can play now, or you can play obviously. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So does anybody here have a question for Andrew? Someone must with all that slow burning, and I'm sure some of you can relate to it. Now that we've completely beat the shit out of WordPress, this would be a great promo for WordPress. Yes, can you stand up and share your question? So how did you get your first customer? Well, that's a great question. For that particular business, I still have no customers. <laughs> you are nailing it! And the business, the business is now retired. <laughs> Under greener pastures. But how did you get your first Oh, my first customer from other businesses, word of mouth. Yeah, for that, for that business, I didn't get a customer. Other ones, word, word of mouth, and project management lessons and, and selling products. Okay. Another question for Andrew? Anybody? And why Vietnam? 
where I'm at now is uh, I'm designing, other, I do a product business, I've just launched a new uh, digital marketing agency, so I've done a few things more successfully, and now applying the techniques that I, I know how to do, and I'm seeing some success, thankfully. <laughs> I'm, learning, I'm learning my lessons. Okay, that's great. Have you never used WordPress? Had I, sorry? WordPress, you said that your skill set? Well, no, I started off not knowing WordPress in the slightest, and I taught myself. I, I do use it quite frequently, but I wish I'd, I wish I'd paid someone to do it instead. <laughs> okay. well, that's great. Let's give Andrew a nice round of applause. Thank you.